everyone, welcome in today's video. Today I will be trying out the chameleon alcohol markers. And also soon I will be holding a giveaway because my subscriber count has passed the 1500 uh, subscribers. So yeah, that's really awesome. Thank you all for your support. And on to the video. Well, today I'm going to try out these chameleon markers. They're relatively new as a product. And yeah, I'm curious how they'll do against other well-known alcohol marker brands like the Copics, of course, and Pro Markers. Um, I heard that recently they got more colors out than these two, uh, 22. But they're not available yet in my country, so yeah, I had to do with this set, and it's a good set to start out with, because it pretty much has all the basic colors you need. So to open it up, there's a little hole in this plastic sheet, and you just push it, and then you can slide it off. And well, this leaflet can go too. It pretty much explains how you you're gonna do this whole mixing pro process. You just take off the the nib and you put it into the chamber. But I'll get to that. And there's a little brochure that comes along with it. Obviously, with more information with how these markers work but I guess for me it works best to just try things out myself and see how it works not to get my brain overloaded with too much information because <laughs> that's usually what happens when I'm reading stuff like that and it comes with a little bag of nibs the brush nibs, they are really tiny and really fine, but I noticed they really wear down fast. So it's nice that they included some extra nibs, because you're going to need them if you're going to use them a whole lot of times. Uh, so yes, the set. It contains 10, 22 colors, which also has a black at the end and then it has a colorless blender which also has a bullet nib and oh, another thing I don't like about these is how hard these caps come off you really have to like uh, go Godzilla on them to get them off but yeah this is what the brush nib is looking like it's really tiny and fine which is great for fine details but yeah, the ends they fluff and go go bad really quick. So that's a little bit of a shame, but ah. and this this just doesn't work for me. This thing it keeps going like that. I'm so terrible with these things. And this is the detail pen. I just call it a fine liner, but it's called a detail pen. As you can see, it has a, a four millimeter. There we go again. Nib and a. De uh, let's see what's that say. A six millimeter, which is a bit bigger for wider lines. Now, during my drawing, I wasn't a big fan of this pen. I'll explain that in the video later, but it is still a nice gesture that they included that with the set, so you don't have to go buy yourself an, uh, an individual inking pen or anything. And these are the actual markers themselves, they look like long and fancy, like a funny little magic wand or anything, Harry Potter like. So here we go again, the struggle of getting the caps off. Uh, here we have another brush tip. 
very fine, very nice. I don't think I used this color, so it's still new. Let's see if I can find the one I have used a lot that looks horrible. Yeah, you can see, maybe I can hold them in comparison. Let's see each other. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it, but the pink one, it is a bit damaged at the end, while the blue one is still new and how it should be, nice and sharp. But once you use them, they won't stay that way for very long, unfortunately. So yeah, the brush nib, it draws very nice. Fine, I've got the, let's see, yeah, fine lines and you go broader with it. And then we have the bullet one somewhere. Oh, I'm gonna mix in one now. Yeah, here it is. So the actual pen is actually quite small. And this is the whole chamber part, the mixing one. And the bullet nibs it it works really well and nice too. Ink comes out nice and even. Nothing to complain about there. Now, for the part where the mixing is involved, you just get this bit off. You put the cap off of which side you want to use. I have the brush side here. And then I'll put it upwards like this. And I'll put the mixing chamber one on top of it. And then I just gotta wait, wait, wait. You can't really see it here, but I can see the ink of the colorless blender, or actually it's just alcohol, um, blending in with the color. So let's see how it does right now. So remember, the color came out just like that. And when I go draw now, there's a chance you see hardly anything. It's still colorless, colorless, colorless. I did a bit long, I suppose. Like help, the color is gone. Let the color go. It should come at some point. And I think I'm going off the camera here. Yep, the color is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It is coming. It sounds so wrong. And then eventually you get back full color. Yep. Where's the cap? It's here. Okay. Putting this thing back together. And then you can see the very nice gradient it creates the longer you keep it in the mixing chamber the longer this effect will last until it's back to its full color so this is how it starts out completely colorless and then slowly the color comes back until it's at full strength again you can really use this to your advantage and create some very fun effects with your drawing uh, like all alcohol markers, these guys are not light fast. It's a shame really, I really hope one day they invent the alcohol marker that is. Because it's such a fun medium. Uh, each color is marked like this. The actual color name is on it. This one is a sky blue. And it is labeled as BL3. And the others are basically labeled the same with their label name and then the, the actual color name. Uh, another great thing about them is, is that you can refill them if the alcohol or if the alcohol ink is, is uh, completely gone you can refill them. I haven't really looked how you should do that but I guess once the time comes I'll find out. And well I think that's Pretty much all I need to tell about these things and well, let's just move on to the tutorial. 
So in today's video I'm going to draw one of my favorite Pokemon. I'm using references to get its details and characteristics as correct as possible. But to keep my piece somewhat original I created a pose and scene from my imagination. I decided I wanted Tal Talon Flame in flight using some kind of fire attack, since it's a flying and fire type. So I sketched out my idea and corrected things I felt that needed correcting. I felt that the beak was too long and not in the right shape at some point, so I raised it and tried it again. Obviously, when you draw from imagination, you will probably make mistakes. But in this case, since it's a fictional character and in a cartoony stylized style, this doesn't really matter much. It doesn't have to be 100% anatomical correct. For this piece, I aim more to create a dynamic picture. When the sketch is to my liking, I start outlining the character with the line liner that came with the set. It has two ends, one for finer lines and one for broader lines. Right off the bat I saw that the ink goes on a bit fuzzy, leaving you with fluffy lines instead of tight clean lines. So I was not that crazy about this pen, but continued with it anyway. The ink flows nicely though. The pen doesn't feel dry and drawing with it goes effortless. I'm not going to line the flames as I want them to glow and black lines would make the flames heavy and they will lose their dynamics. Instead I'll likely draw them out with an orange polychromos pencil so that when I erase the sketch they will still be slightly visible when I want to color them. To put more interest in the line art, I used the figure nib of the fine liner pen to add weight to some of the lines by making them thicker. This will make the line art more interesting and less flat. Now you can see the fluffiness better when you look at the thicker lines. It's not nice and neat. So in future works, I'll probably won't be using this pen anymore to do the inking part. For coloring, I decided I wanted to go with some lighter but bright color theme for the background, so that the oranges and reds of the character and the fire spells will pop nicely. So I thought a pale pink and a range of salmon and yellow colors would do the work nicely. Firstly, I lay down the pale pink that comes in the set. The ink is really juicy and it's very even. Hardly any patches and no paper textures come through, like often happens when you use Copic markers. So that was very impressive. But the brush nib wears down really fast. When I was done with my first layer, the end of the thin brush nib had already gone fuzzy. Also, because it's such a fine nib, filling in bigger areas can be quite tedious. Like with color pencils, I layer my colors to get stronger hues. I make sure to avoid coloring the areas where the flames are at, as I will do them at, a very, at the very end. I start out with the background so I can get an overall feel for the piece and create a mood. Also it helps me deciding how to color my main subjects, on what colors to use for shadows and highlights. When I was coloring the beak, I tried to I tried the blending technique that these markers offer and are sort of their trademark. You'd think it will become an annoying at some point to keep putting your brush in the mixing chamber and wait a couple of seconds for the colors to colorless blender to mix in. But somehow I did not find it to be a hindrance really. At least it gave me time to overlook my piece and plan the next few steps ahead. Also, if you hear some rumbling in the background, then it is the weather outside. Somehow the weather gods decided to throw in a little thunder. <laughs> So I am blocking in the orange part of the character and again try to avoid the color the flame areas. Just look how nice and even the ink comes out. I really like that about these markers, plus the fact that they are refillable. That's also a very good thing.
So now I move on to my yellow color and plug in the feet and highlights, or actually the reflective lights of the flames, onto the bird. Now the edges of the yellow highlights and the orange base color are a bit harsh, so I took the colorless blender marker that is included with the set and tried to smoothen the edges up a bit. Then I add a bit of pink to reflect the background color into the character. Now I grab my darker purple to add some shading into the character. Again I put my brush nib into the mixing chamber for about 5 seconds to get a fun gradient effect. The longer you keep your brush nib in the chamber with the chamber part up, the longer the gradient effect will last until it's back to its original color. But I found 10 seconds was long enough for me. When you do this you have to remember it starts of light. So where you want it to be dark you have to finish. So in other words you have to work towards the area you want darkest. I repeat the chamber mixing step with my red that I will layer over the orange of the wing and over the purple shaded areas to give the colors even more depth. That's another thing I really like about alcohol markers in general. The fact you can layer your colors so well with them. It's just such a shame none of them are light fast, so they won't be a very good medium to use on commissions and sales pieces, but only for print making, I suppose. So I am adding my final touches on the red part to make the character look a bit more fiery. Now onto the grey part, I start by blocking in with the light pink and layer over that with a grey. I didn't really work as there was hardly a hint of that pink once I added the grey, but oh well. <laughs> I continue to block in the rest with the grey. Sometimes it works better to layer a lighter color on top of a darker one instead of the other way around. As like the colorless blender, the lighter colors seem to push away the darker color underneath, which can give you some nice results. And there was a thunder roll, I'm sorry about that. Especially when the layer underneath is still a bit damp. To bring the effect of the glowing flames onto the character some more, I use my yellow marker to layer on top of the greys where I think the light would reflect on. This gives your subject an extra dimension and when the picture is done, the character will be one with the whole picture instead of giving you the feeling it was pasted on. Finally, we are going to color the flames. I start with my yellow and leave the middle of each flame alone. As you can see, because the background is light and pink and the ink flows a bit, a nice outline magically appears and makes the flame look extra glowy. Once I got my yellow layer down, I grab my orange, but instead of putting down my orange directly onto the paper, I take my yellow and touch my yellow nib against the orange nib. Sounds kinda weird. <laughs> now you will have the same thing happen as what happens when you put the nib in the colorless mixing chamber, but instead of the ink starting out colorless, it starts out yellow and will slowly turn orange, depending on how long you mix. This will give me a nice gradient effect on my flames that won't be too harsh and flat. You can try this with any other alcohol marker or even with water soluble ones like the six I tested before. As you can see this way the orange in the flames are subtle and soft, giving the flames depth without being too obvious as we want to keep the character the focal point of the piece. For the final touches I'll be using a white calligraphy ink 
and a white gel pen to hide some ink lines that I forgot to leave out and to add some sparkles around the flames. So we are at the end of the video. I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like. And if you don't want to miss out on future videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Have a good one.